<sighs> Damn, Q. Maybe you did that. You know what it is, man. It's your boy Q Lewis holding it down live from the 48205, man. We back on the block in the basement, and this time we got a very special guest. Um, she's familiar to the basement, though. She's been here before, but a lot of stuff has happened since the last time she was on the show. So we got the uh, let's let's see, let's let's go down the list. So we got a award-winning screenplay writer, all right, uh, director, uh, children's book author. Right, what else we got? Oh, dope ass lyricist. Don't forget about that though, because she got <laughs> lyrics too. And this is Nas number one fan. Dog. It is. We got Erica Gomez in the building. Erica, what's happening? What's Welcome up? back. What I'm doing, dog. Thanks for uh, stopping back by today. I know you got a lot of stuff going on, so we go uh, try to tap into as much of it as we can. You okay. know what I'm saying? But uh, first of all, since the last time, um, we got a couple movies on Tubi, um, and, and also. Too, I, I want to say that the first time we were on, you had only written these movies. Nothing had been actually produced yet, right? No, actually, I had just wrapped on contract. It was got you. Okay. It wasn't on. I only. It wasn't out yet. Being edited and. Right. Yeah. Nah, for sure. So let, let's talk about that. Uh, since then, uh, tell the people what's been going on with you. Um, I am an executive producer, so. I'm actually working on my fifth project. Gotcha. Um, I have two features and I have two shorts that I've done and then my TV series that I'm filming right now. For sure. And what's the, uh, can we divulge the name of the TV series now? Yeah, okay. it's, called, <laughs> it's called A Record in Time and it's a fantasy sci-fi about a magical record player that actually um, is a time machine. Okay. <laughs> Where did that come from? You know, some of the, um, I really, I guess I never really shared this until somebody um, reached out to me and wanted me to write an article for something to help women. Okay. And I recently did that and I realized that me, myself, I had repressed memories. I had two repressed memories that I pushed out of my mind, never shared with anybody. Yeah. And that's kind of what the concept is about. It's about gotcha. repressed memories, um, memories that people don't even know that exist. Yeah. So the record player, you know how you listen to a song and it'll take you back to a moment in your life. For sure. For That's sure. what the record player actually does. Like okay. the record player has songs that are actually locked with that repressed memory. Gotcha. So once okay. you unlock the, um, well, when you turn on the record player or whatever, mm -hmm. it unlocks that memory and that song and it takes you back to <laughs> that moment. Word. No, that's dope. That's dope. And definitely something different because obviously we're, uh, we're in the city of Detroit and then we know what these, um, I don't want to call them Detroit movies, but we'll say like the the films that Detroit filmmakers are making. Um, it is kind of a kind of stuck in one genre, so mm -hmm. I think it'll be refreshing to see something like this. And what I guess my question too is, what made you go into the direction of episodes as opposed to making one full uh, full feature length movie on that topic? Well, with that concept, mm -hmm. I actually um, submitted to an NBC Universal contest. Okay. And it was actually based on an episode of Black Mirror. So it was based on writing an episode of Black I fucking Mirror. I love Black I mean, Mirror. Me too, right? <laughs> Nothing ever goes right on that show. Nothing. <laughs> and so I wrote that for that. It didn't win, of course, but mm -hmm. I sat on it for, I think I did that in like 2017. Okay. And I just sat on it because I knew that I wanted it to be a series. I just yeah. didn't know what I was going to do. Okay. Duh. How dope would that have been, though? I know, right? To be a part of that. Yeah. So now what you got to do is create your own Black Mirrors type situation. No, I know, right? Man. That's kind of what this sort is. Of, yeah. It's like, it's Back to the Future meets the Butterfly Effect. And remember, the Butterfly Effect just wouldn't go right for that. <laughs> yeah. No, no matter how many times no they try to fix it. No matter how many times you try to fix it, right. it always be messed up. Nah, for sure. Yeah. Nah, that's kind of dope, though. I, I like it. Uh, now, I know you're working on some new stuff, too. Um, can we get into that? Or? Yeah, we okay. can. We can. <laughs> All right, so uh, tell, give people a little, uh, little preview of what you're working on right now. So, right now, I actually, like, 
I join like all these two B groups. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I try not to read the comments, but hey, <laughs> look, I'm I try to tell you read the I'm comments. I'm not going back and forth with nobody. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. For sure, it's a lot of shit I don't like. Hey, but uh, we go we gonna keep on where you going with it. But okay. after this though, we got to talk about the one comment that you got that okay. you reposted. You remember that, right? About I, your, I don't know, like the the, uh, the movie critic that reposted. Oh, oh god, we gonna get yes. into that. But go ahead. Okay, go ahead. so um, I was I would like share contract healer and all the two groups. They like what's out new? What's you know? So yeah. I put contract healer, contract healer. Yeah. So everybody starts saying, I know it's got to be a part two. I love it. You you left it open. It's got to yeah. be a part two. And I was like. You know, like so, I, so you didn't really leave it open for a part no, time. No, you remember how I don't know if you remember, but <laughs> I really I thought the same no, thing. No, <laughs> when I was a, like when I used to watch all these movies when I was a kid, you would always get this ending that oh it's gonna be a part two, but it never it just was. never like, was. It still ain't a part two. Was, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was just figured, you know, leave it at that. Yeah, leave it at that. But yeah. everybody kept asking me like, it's gonna be a part two. It's gonna be a part. Two. I was like, and then Will Coleman was asking me, is it gonna be a part two? Is it gonna be a part two? You should write a part two. So I'm like, and everybody loved him. So yeah. the women, the women love him. So I was like, okay. Shout out to Will. They do. Shout out to Will. Yeah. The women love you, Will. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna write a part two. But me personally, mm -hmm. when somebody does a sequel, I'm sorry, the sequel has to be equal or better yeah. to the original. No, for sure, for sure. And that sometimes, happen. <laughs> sometimes sequels are the yeah. for sure drop off. Yeah, like, yeah, like so. they be terrible. So, so does that frighten you though? Like are you is that kinda, make you nervous? It, it kinda it made me like I had to sit and think like, okay, what can I do with this film that would be better than the first film? Right. Now of course it's not perfect. You know the, mm. the first film is not perfect. It's not exactly how I wrote it. Right. But we had budget constraints, so we had to do what we could. For sure. But I'm like, I gotta write a better story. Mm -hmm. So I had to sit and think and ponder on it for a while, and I came up with yeah. something. Yeah. Okay. So how are you feeling about it though? Like, I'm feeling great about it. Okay. Like, um, are you gonna I, be able to get all the same people involved? Well, with this one, there are three people from the original. Okay. So yeah, okay. I'm. So it's enough to, they, they for some continuity. They would come back. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, I hate that too though. Like when you have sequels and like nobody from the first one's in the there. Same people, but it's the same character. Exactly. So you're yeah. like, damn, what happened? Yeah, like. <laughs> right. And then if it's bad, you don't want to sit there and watch it. Like if it's good, <laughs> you actually it'll make you forget. Like, oh wait a minute, this not even the original person. But yeah. Like, nine times out of ten, it don't. Be. That's tough. That's tough to yeah. overcome though, for real, for real. Yeah. Yeah. Now, real quick, I just mentioned about the that comment, right? That uh, somebody had shared your. Uh, that shit was so <laughs> So tell the people about that in case they don't know all right, what happened. So um, his damn the name of his creep cuss. I think it's creep cuss. He's like a really like well known critic, movie critic on. Actually, he be critic um, reviewing all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But he reviewed Survivor as a Ghost Writer thanks to Troy, who actually let allow me to use some of his music, and he was one of the battle rappers in my premiere. Gotcha. Um, he asked him like can you review this like right. unbiased like can you review this yeah. and normally the guy reviews all mainstream stuff for sure for sure so he plugged this in real quick mm -hmm. with an adam sandler review right and we got a better <laughs> review than adam sandler exactly <laughs> <laughs> like six what six point four better because i want to say adam sandler got like a one point oh yeah. <laughs> right he kind of dogged that movie yeah, yeah he sure. did yeah. yeah how much like how much does because obviously i know that critics are critics right yeah, yeah. but like how much does their opinion really like matter to you like well like but in his case yeah. he said <laughs> it was funny though <laughs> he was like all of the dogs fucking suck he would have cut all of their fucking parts i was like a, like one of the adults but he did say that <laughs> he was like i was rolling he was like the drama shit the music he was all oh, that shit sucked he was like had they not put that shit in here this mm. would have been a really really dope movie <laughs> but he also said he enjoyed it. Which was weird to say, yeah, right? Yeah, he said he enjoyed yeah, he it. He said he enjoyed he it, He gave it right. a 7.4 out of 10, and I, yeah. I ain't gonna front. I went through, like, some of his reviews, and I'm like, damn, we got a higher number than that? We got a higher... Yeah. So, like, it made me feel good. Like, even though, you know, he told how he truly felt, and I mm -hmm. appreciate that. Yeah, so, I don't sure. have a problem with somebody truly telling me how they feel about my films. Right. Because that helps me to be a better writer. No, nah, for sure. Director, so, for sure. Yeah. And so let, let's stay right there in that section for a second. Like, who is it in your circle right now that you really ask 
for that criticism. Like somebody you really say like, hey, what do you think about this? And you really value their opinion. Paris. Paris okay. her. For sure. Uh, Shout out to Paris. Yeah, he started out as just the actor in Survival was the Ghostwriter, but he mm -hmm. came on the team as the crew and he became my AD, my production supervisor. Yeah. He's everything. And he's a writer too. So gotcha. he don't yeah, he don't hold it up. Right. So that's he the one person. Too. You know, they don't <laughs> <laughs> here you go with these. <laughs> Zodiac size. Zodiac size. Yeah, right? but yeah, he he tell me the truth. Yeah, so that's the one person you can really go to for yeah. sure. And I think that's necessary though, right? Yeah. Especially as an artist, you need that person that's going to not only keep it real with you, but you respect their opinion. Because yeah. a lot of people that keep it real with you, but you still like, I don't respect your opinion. So yeah, it don't matter, right? right? <laughs> so like you kept it real, but so what? Yeah, true. <laughs> right? No, for sure. Um, so for the people who may have not seen the, uh, the first interview or aren't familiar with your work at all, like I kind of want you to take it all the way back to the beginning and just tell me like what really made you want to make movies um so we go back to the beginning mm -hmm. um i got out, fresh out of the military i said this in the last interview i went i started going to wc3 and i had an english course and the professor was like y'all have to write a children's story and I actually put some thought into it, you know, because right. I, I already I was a poet, you know, I wrote poetry, but I sure. never really did anything, I, you know, besides that. Right. And so I actually put thought into it and I wrote this children's story. I think it was called Rufus Tufus. Or something like that. <laughs> Rufus it was about Tufus. a tooth who wanted to be a boy, you know what I'm saying? Bruh, what? I know, right? <laughs> I've always had an imagination. So you need to go ahead and bring that back, though. I can't. I don't even know where the <laughs> manuscript is. Like I had it for years, but I don't yeah. know what happened to it. That's funny you said. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it was called Rufus Tufus, and she everybody was you know reading their children's books, and I read mine, and she didn't say this for anybody else. She was like, "Wait a minute." She was like, "You actually wrote that?" I was like, "Yeah." She was like. That was really good. So it might you know? be on to something. <laughs> like, yeah, no, for sure. So I started writing children's books, mm -hmm. and I kind of like focused on my son. Like I think the first book that I actually wrote, it was called "Only Only Boys Can Play with My Toys," and I actually got it published just on Amazon. Right. But it was about him because he was a male chauvinist. You know, like he, I know, at like two years old, he <laughs> how you gonna be a male chauvinist? He was like he at just, two. Like, he was like he just did not want to play with girls. He was yeah. like, uh, you know, boys is better. You know yeah. he. He was a chauvinist. Yeah. And so <laughs> I wrote that book about him That's because funny. I wanted kids to know like no matter and now the times that we live in, no matter how what what gender you are or not, you know, because a lot mm -hmm. of people don't want to even identify with a gender. Exactly. That's true. You still are able to be yourself and have fun and kids should be able to play together. No right. matter what. No. Yeah. For sure. No, that's dope though. I just cause a lot of people like again who might not know your origin story, I just want them to know how it came to be. Now, since you're in it, like you're in the industry now, like yeah. it's not, you're not outside no more. You, you inside. Yeah. Right. So with that being said, like what two? this is a two part question. The, the first part is what, what about this industry do you absolutely hate? Like something like, cause I know you love to make movies, but obviously it's, it's probably stuff in the industry that make you be like, dog, I don't, I don't not want to be doing this. Yeah. So yeah, I'll be ready to walk away from it. Like, <laughs> every day. Yeah, every day. Like, and then somebody had to talk me out of it. Like, don't uh -huh. walk away from it. You, right. You were meant for this. Right. But I guess I would say people that concentrate on the being popular Mm -hmm. and making money versus the passion and the art of it. The art, so right. me being the person who focuses on the passion and the art of it and getting better and better, no matter, I don't have, I have like a $10,000 budget, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I still want to do the best that I can right. within my means. For sure. And just to see that uh, other people, and this is not to knock anybody, because right. There's mo everybody needs motivation. No, for Some sure. Some people motivated by money. Some people motivated by popularity. Whatever I'm just, your motivation I'm, is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I feel like an outsider because I want to write different stuff. Like, I don't yeah. want to write what everybody else is writing. I don't want to put out what everybody else is putting out. I don't right. want to work with, with who everybody else is working with. And I don't mean no offense to that. Right. I want to give people, because it was people that, ne like, my first film, nobody wanted to work with me. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Is it because you think it's because like they didn't know you or yeah, you weren't, you weren't in certain circles? Yeah, I wasn't yeah. in certain certain circles and I didn't have a name. Yeah. So me personally, I want to work with people 
that nobody wants to work with or who people <laughs> you want to work with the misfits huh? yeah like i guess you could say you remember misfits toys whatever and exactly was, and what was it rudolph the red nose right there hey, like i'm the yeah. misfit director and i want to work with the misfit actors and actresses nah, that's what i want to sure. do yeah, yeah i hear you now the, the second part of that, of course, is like what what is it about the industry that you absolutely love? Like what what what's your reward in this? I guess is the question. I guess what I absolutely love is that, and I didn't finish the first thing that you asked me. Like, how did I get? Like, where did I start at? So oh okay, Let's, I wrote, I'm sorry. No, just, Let's I'm, go not, back. I'm just gonna be real quick because that's gonna lead into this. Like, okay. so I wrote the children's books. Like, I wrote several of them. Like, it's several that I'm sitting on that I have to get illustrated. But okay. I was like, I want to write a movie. Mm. This was like in 2004. Okay. I didn't actually act on it until like 2010. Gotcha. So it took me six years. To even start. Yeah, to like. even start. And I had to teach myself how to write right. a screenplay. Gotcha. So with that being said, I did all of that and fast forward. What was the say? Look, you got to give me that question again. What? Yeah, just where, how you started and what, what was nah, your, what, the, what we talking the, about? Back to where we going? Back to the, the okay. The, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, I'm what, what do you, I forget what do you absolutely love about the industry okay. and, and basically like what is your reward in this? Okay, so I brought that up to say that it was not easy. Like right. me starting to write my first screenplay, getting to where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. I was looking, like I was pitching to all kinds of people like yeah. Tyler Perry, um, Ice Cube. Robert Townsend, like I was pitching for Robert Queen Townsend. Latifah. That's like, dope. I hadn't, never, hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, some of them rejected me off rip. Like, you have to have an eight. Most of you gotta have eight. Gotta have some eight, people yeah. was willing to, like, listen to me. Yeah. And See, that's something that you had to learn, though. Yeah, that was something that I had yeah. to learn. And so I got frustrated and I walked away. I was like, F it, you know, like, don't nobody want to give me a chance. You gotta have an agent to get an agent. You know, like, they don't want to <laughs> give you a chance. You can't right. get a manager. So I was like, fuck it. You know, like, I just, whatever. Yeah. But, being that what people are doing in Detroit now, which it wasn't, that wasn't heard of back when I was first nah, started pitching. Not at all. You're right. They, they, none of these opportunities were here. So the stuff that we see like Dennis Reed and, and Lisa Brown and all these people doing, like that was not available back when I first started. Writing. Right. No, so, for sure. I've been writing and sitting on scripts for over 10 years. Yeah. So the thing that I love most about this is seeing people like them actually coming up in this industry right in an industry that didn't want us to let us in you know what i'm saying exactly. they didn't want to let us in right. so now i actually have the opportunity to actually film and actually see it come to life on screen on tv you know right. people get to see it for sure so that, that's what i love about yeah. what i'm doing no doubt so that you would you say that that's your motivation i guess to it, keep going it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure uh so uh, my next question obviously is still kind of staying in that same realm but like while you're in the industry and we're kind of looking at the detroit industry right now mm -hmm. what's what's like your grand scope of things like how far do you want this to go like are you looking at national international a big production do you want to continue to keep doing your own production like where do you kind of see it going well, of course, I want to be international. I mm -hmm. want to be international. I want to go beyond Tubi. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have a relationship with any network that's Even out. though Tubi basically is international because it's, it it's the internet. Well, right? yeah, it's international. I know it's not in certain countries. Yeah, well. But yeah. I'm sure it will one day. It will be. Um, And there's nothing wrong with Tubi. Mm -hmm. At all. It's not. All right. But I, I guess my goal is to, like, be able to be on multiple platforms. Be gotcha. on multiple platforms, um, have a name for myself amongst not just Detroit, but just everywhere. Right. And me personally, I want to remain independent because mm -hmm. I want to be able to control my creativity. For sure. I don't want somebody else telling me, no, you can't do that. You can't do it. Exactly. No, I want to be able to tell stories that I want to tell. Yeah, because once you get in the machine. Yeah, once you're in the machine. You're in there. <laughs> you got to do what they say. I mean, no, no, no um, shade because I really. Because you can get money. You but, can. Yeah. No, but no shade to Issa Rae because I really respect her and look up to her. Mm -hmm. But she realized that with them canceling her latest mm -hmm. TV series, like she started out as a YouTuber, right? Right, for sure. And she got she got the um, recognition from mainstream Hollywood, so she went into mainstream Hollywood. She's successful at it. But she realized, like, they'll cancel you at any moment. And guess yeah. what? 
you can't do nothing about it because they own it. They own it, right? Exactly. Even though you put your hard yeah. blood, sweat, and tears in it, they own mm-hmm. it. And yeah. I don't, I don't want to be subjected to that. And that's a that's a tough thing, though, right? Because you, you figure. You making, let's just say you making content for YouTube and you get this call from a major studio. Know, right? It's like, you're not going to turn it down. But like, how do you, like, like in, in your instance, right? So let's say you're making these films now mm-hmm. and you get a call from a major like production. Like if you, are you taking it at this point or are you going to try to maneuver a way around to get their support without working within their, you know, confines? Probably if that's a way. Like I'm mean, a, I'm gonna try it. So, yeah. like right now, I and I don't really talk about it, but I submitted to two mainstream. Oh shit! Exclusive. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm still <laughs> waiting to know if I made it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But those were two projects that I'm not holding near and dear to my my heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they I'm get willing smashed to up. Put, I'm willing to put projects in mainstream and mm-hmm. work with mainstream people. On certain but stuff. on certain stuff, but the stuff that is near and dear to me, that is where it remains independent. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. At least you got a plan. Yeah. Because you got to go in there with a plan. Because if you don't, like I will... can't put all my eggs in a basket. Exactly. And I... <laughs> you ain't gonna have, <laughs> you ain't gonna have shit for the have basket. Shit for the basket. <laughs> they ain't gonna have the eggs, and I ain't gonna have a basket. Right. I'll barely have a basket with anything in it. Uh, for real, for real. Yeah. So uh, being a writer, because obviously you started out doing that first. Like, which one do you enjoy most? Like, writing the, the actual projects or creating, directing them and, and producing them? Well, I'd have to say writing. Mm-hmm. That's where I really, I don't know, that's where I'm really passionate and I, like, that's just my thing. Like, yeah. I just love to write. That's how I escape. Don't get me wrong, I love being a director, mm-hmm. but... It's probably going to be so long that I'm going to be a director. Like, my right. goal is to direct, of course, but I want to get to a certain point where I'm not directing anymore. I'm more on the EP writer side. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because so. directing is, is tough. It is it's tough. It's tough, yeah, for sure. And, and let's, let's, let's stay there for a moment, too. Since you are the writer, how hard is it to work with other directors? Because when you wrote it, you see it a certain way. And sometimes a director can come in and kind of flip it and you might not necessarily agree with that, so like. And see, I've never experienced that because mm-hmm. I direct my own stuff. All your stuff. <laughs> and that's and then like, cause I've had people ask me, "Well, would you direct my script?" Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do them a this. What is it? I disservice. Don't, disservice because yeah. the way I see your project, you may not see it that way. Sometimes though, the director yeah. sees it in the way that it needs and to be seen. Maybe, yeah. but I'm not even comfortable to get into. You're not there yet. That lane to where I'm directing somebody else. Yeah, no, for sure. Are you ready to let somebody direct yours? No. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask an even better question. Will you ever be? <laughs> Eventually, I think Eventually. I will, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The right directors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, do you do any writing that, like, just for scripts that you want to sell? Like, do you ever... Because I've heard some people, some, um, some like, some major uh, film producers who say, like, they write stuff on the side just to sell it. Like, they don't want no parts of it. They just want to sell it. And that's what I'm trying to get comfortable doing because mm-hmm. like I said Paris that's like that's my right hand man he was like why don't you just write scripts to sell to sell yeah why not and that's what I came up like and I ain't trying to toot my own horn but I can come <laughs> up with, with a concept in like a minute right so I came up with like five concepts in like five minutes mm-hmm. I was like okay I'm gonna write these scripts and I'm gonna sell them yeah. got to writing them your heart I'm not in it. too much into it. So yeah. My heart is not yet. I can't part with these scripts. Right. Like, so now it's yours. It's mine. <laughs> now it's your baby. Yeah, it's my baby. I'm, I'm hoping to one day get to that point mm-hmm. where I can sell scripts. But I mean, sometimes it's a tough industry. Sometimes you got to sell your baby. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. That's true. In the right way, though. They'll sell yeah, your baby. Yeah, in the right yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> Some people sell their baby. No, I know, right? We won't get into all that, but... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm so, trying. Yeah. Like, that's my I think my that's goal. the lane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, again, I heard this and I can't remember who the filmmaker was, but it was somebody prominent. It's like, you know, that's, they do, they just do that shit. Yeah. Like, hey, here goes some scripts. Pay me. Pay me. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't ever want to see it again. It's yeah. smart. Like, that's another um, income, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I'm trying to get there, but it's like, I put so much into these scripts. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. I just get attached and I need yeah. to not get attached. So, theoretically, like, if you were doing this, um, as far as what you would be looking for for payment if someone had a, a book that they needed you to turn into a script 
Oh, I'm willing to do that. Yeah, like, what would your rates look like on that? You know, just for whoever might be, you know, want to do that. It depends. Like, I know what, <laughs> okay, so it depends on the, the book. Like, okay. if the book is well written mm-hmm. and it's easy for me to flow with it, and we, you know, it's not that much work. It's not, you know, like. <laughs> I'd say right. I start at like I say like five thousand though. Yeah. Cause at first I was thinking like maybe fifteen. No, I can't do that. No, I, I can't do that. No, so. you got you got films produced and are yeah. published and streaming and everybody watch them. Yeah, don't yeah. do that. So probably maybe at like the beginning, five. maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it probably start at like five thousand. For sure, that should be dope though. That yeah, one should turn into a, a movie. I've had quite a few people ask me that. Yeah, cause I mean that's the thing, like turning. What people don't understand is like a book and a script is two different things, which is why like a lot of times I tried to write a book. Yeah, so a lot of times you watch a a novel, right? A lot of times you watch a movie and and you've read the book, you know, it's nothing like the Mm -hmm. book, like because there is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. Yeah, there's a lot of work involved in that. So that's I guess with that, like I was highly disappointed with it. Like I I read the book and I loved the book and it was like fourteen hundred pages. See, I never read the book. Oh my god, the book. I love the movie though. You said the movie trash in comparison. The new one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's that's my shit though. I didn't like how they changed the black character. Like it was a lot that he messed up. Oh, see, I see because I didn't know the characters. I guess yeah, you, yeah. if you actually read the book and you, you'd like, be disappointed. Like, this shit is bullshit. Yeah. Oh, damn. So I feel like if I'm going to write, turn somebody's novel into a script, you want it to be I better. Would, yeah, I want it to at least be just as great as that book. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or better. Like, or better. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't. Has that ever happened for you? Have you ever seen a movie that you've read the book and felt like the movie was way better than the book? No. I don't think that just probably no. don't happen. Yeah. You'll be the first one. No, no, no. I probably won't. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's hard a, to do. I like, think that's tough to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, so I, I've been I've been running my mouth this whole time. Dog. Um, let's just what what did I want to do? Uh, it, it was one question I wanted to ask you too, though, about the uh, about the movies, right? Okay. Um, and I'm not even sure if this is a Detroit, uh, Detroit thing or just an independent film uh, maker thing, but like, how important to you is the uh, what do you call it? The uh, premieres. Like how important is the premiere of a movie? Because I've seen, I've seen some, <laughs> and again, like you know, shout out to my people out here making movies. But I've seen some very lackluster movies with over the top premieres. Though, mm-hmm. like the premiere was like outrageous, and the movie was like, eh, you know what I'm saying? So like, where do you see, like, where do you see that? Because I know the, I know yours is more small and intimate, mm-hmm. which I think is is better because you actually get the. First of all, you get the feedback that you really need, and you get the people who actually need to be there to be there. So, mm-hmm. uh, what you like? What do you see like as far as the pre- premiere is going? Like, how do you want to keep forging ahead that way, or do you ever see yourself doing like these huge, humongous, you know, Bel Air uh, people getting dropped off <laughs> by their driver, you know, coming out the helicopters? No, <laughs> and the I, movie trash. I know, right? <laughs> I'm not really big on premieres, like. Mm. Like you said, the ones that I do are more small and intimate. Mm-hmm. And that's because, and not to say that they're not expensive, like, because I feed people and everything. We had no, an open sure. bar at the last one. It was Damn, yeah, it was I missed open. that one. We had an open bar at the other one, too. What? Free oh, open yeah, bar. you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I was working, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was working. So, <laughs> I know, right? So, but. Food was good, though. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Ten times better soul food. For it was sure. Like both of them. But um, I don't really believe in the premieres because mm-hmm. I feel like the money. And I know that they make that money back. Yeah. But the money that they invest in premieres, Mm -hmm. it really should go towards marketing and advertising. That's something that I didn't realize with my first movie. Yeah. The marketing and advertising is very important. Especially when you like me, you don't have a name out here. Mm -hmm. Some people have names and people just automatically go watch their stuff. Yeah, because they already know. Yeah, they already know. Okay, they know their track record. For sure. But don't nobody even know who I am. So Mm -hmm. I feel like the money needs to be spent on marketing and advertising. Yeah. So, I mean, premieres are great, you know, because your family and friends coming, mm-hmm. but and it's kind what, of what what's we do beyond it? that? Yeah. Like, what's, what's beyond this elaborate ass, you know, like, <laughs> premiere, you know, like, what's beyond that? Right. And so, no, I don't really, that's not really my thing. I'm not really, you know, I'm not really a person. Not that I don't like, I love people, but I'm not yeah. really, I don't really <laughs> like being People. around a lot of you know i don't really like that yeah. so maybe i'm being biased but i feel like if your movie is not that great mm-hmm. 
But, but maybe that's their time to shine. Maybe that's their only time to shine. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Not At the premiere. But I don't really believe in premieres like that. Yeah. I, I'm going to have a premiere for a regular time, but it's not going to be this over the time. Yeah, it's going to be like the like kind of movie. intimate thing that you normally do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and that, could be, that could be your stilo now. Yeah. Like, because I've been to a, a few premieres and... I've been to a few over the top ones too where I was like really disappointed at the the product. So like sometimes I would rather it just be something small and intimate, especially then you get to really kind of mingle with people. And, and again, for me, it's just the the right people are there. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Because like sometimes you do these huge events and people are just there to be people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like that don't really like obviously, like you said, you can make money. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. if that's going to be your main focus, then that's where a lot of the art gets lost anyway. So. No, exactly. I can definitely respect that. Yeah. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you before you got out of here. Well, actually, uh, kind of two things, right? This yeah. is all one one question, really, but it's two separate answers, I guess. Um, from the city of Detroit, like locally, uh, I won't say just the city of Detroit, but in the local area, who would be like your dream team that you would want to work work with on a on your next project, or maybe not the next project, or just a project in general? Like, is there a a dream DP that you want to work with, a dream actor, like star and role. Like, is there like a team that you just, if you could put together an all star team, like who would that, who would that be? Well, like I said, I'm, I don't really know a whole lot of people, so mm-hmm. I can't really. This is not being like biased or anything. Mm-hmm. I don't really know a lot of DPs. Mm-hmm. Um, the DP that I'm working with now is pretty good. He had, uh-huh. I really like he had, not, you know, he he gets my vision. Gotcha. So I, you know, I would. That's, with him again. that's your team. Gotcha. Yeah, that's my okay. team. Um, as far as on the definitely, acting, definitely got to bring Paris back because I, mean, I know yeah, Paris, your team. Of course, yeah. that's my that go without saying. He's yeah. part of Sean Van, so got you. Okay. Yeah, him and Rose. So Rose gotcha. J, Humphreys, and Paris have heard they are. We are like a three-person team. Yeah, like we filmed this series with three people. Word. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, we, you working, working? Yeah, I'm working, working. Yeah. So we we're all about getting the job done. Nah, for sure. But yeah. as far as like talent, mm-hmm. I mean, she already knows this. Erica Franklin is is like my, she's like, she's become my little sister. Okay. Like, I really believe in her. I believe in her range. I know that she's passionate about it. So, mm-hmm. Erica Franklin, um, Celeste, I was blessed with working with her on my TV series. Okay. She's a great actress. I would always work with her. Brittany Chanel, and it's no type of order, y'all. It's no type of order. For sure. Shout Brittany out to Brittany. Chan- yeah, Brittany Chanel, she is a great actress. I actually created a character for her in my TV series because I want people to see how great she is. Like, she's very underrated. Actually, all of them are underrated. No, nah, for sure. And then Ashley K, her part, you know, I just met her, casted her in A Record in Time. Okay. Her part is not that big, but because of what she brought to the series, mm-hmm. I already want to include her in season two. For sure. As a more supporting, like main, main, main cast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like. All right, so, there's a lot of girl power on this I team. Know, I know, I'm not being <laughs> gender biased. I'm not. A lot of girl power. But I have not. Paris, of course, he mm-hmm. has. He He's Trenton, so if I was a ghostwriter, he's also yep. Zach in A Record in Time. Who okay. He is not a good person. Oh, okay. And, he really so that's completely different from yeah, his, completely different from his role in yeah the other joint. Um, he got a nice little uh, 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 like a slight comic uh, like mm-hmm. feel to him without even trying it. Yeah, like. and that's the way. So I think that's because, dope. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. He he has it like some For people sure. have it naturally, and he I would say he has it naturally. Yeah. As far as the other, I haven't really worked with a ton of men. Sam was great. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm trying. Tavion was great. Some people are naturals, you know. But as far as the yeah, men, gamer was good. Oh my son! <laughs> <laughs> he actually remembered his lines. Like I was shocked. Like he remembered his lines. He yeah. did great, you know. Mm-hmm. But, I- how were you with that though? Like, were you nervous about how he was going to be and how people would respond to him, especially knowing that that's your son? Like, you don't nervous. want nobody to say nothing about, about him. Like, but I was nervous about even offering him that role. I'm like, this is a loser, a weirdo <laughs> gamer. But my son is a gamer. Yeah. Like, he's different, you know. Uh-huh. Like, so he didn't mind. He didn't yeah. mind being the the um, person that doesn't win the battle. He didn't yeah. mind being the oddball. 
for sure. Because that's the way he is. That's like, the way he is. You know? Okay, that's what's up. But yeah, as far as I didn't really think anybody would say too much about him. Okay, because that's what his character was. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So that's what it's supposed to be. That's what it's right. supposed to be. So. <laughs> The, the fact that you remember him, I like that. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Now, the second part of that question, still the same question, but if you were able to create that team out of, like, industry folks, like, big wig industry folks, like, who would you include on that team? Like, who would you want to work with? Oh, no. Um, or, or is it, like, maybe you don't even want to do big wig industry people? As far as um, DPs, I can't think offhand. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it's a lot that I really love. Right, because it's, it's kind of hard to keep up with them at that yeah, level. Yeah, it is. Like, yeah. I can't even really... You know these name. because we're... I don't really know a lot of people's names, but for I know sure. work. I ain't gonna lie. Until until Detroit became a real industry, I didn't even know that DP exists. Like, no, I, I never I even mean, knew what a director of photography either, was. I until I actually started working in the film industry. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't exactly. know. I was like, I'm like, who the DP? Like, what? I'm not a director of photography. You need that person. Like. You need that person, yes. Yeah, but as far as um, the talent... Mm -hmm. Maybe the executive producers. I would yeah. like to work with um, so many people. It's I cool. love Antoine girl. Fuqua. I, oh, I thought it was going to be girl power again. No, I love Antoine <laughs> Fuqua. I do. Okay. Um, it is girl power over here. But as far <laughs> as like talent, it's, you know something, it's crazy because like I started following all these people that I wanted to work with and mm -hmm. I started following Chance Perdomo because I wanted mm -hmm. to work with him. Like, okay. He passed away, I don't know. That. Right. Yeah, but like, it's certain like people that I want to work with, um, Jonathan Majors, we talked about him last time. <laughs> and I still want to work with Jonathan yeah. Majors. Maybe he'll give me a chance now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe he, not, he he's not doing a, a, a stretch in prison. You know, maybe he do. You know, he ain't work with me. <laughs> you know, Shout saying. out to Doug. But he's a great actor. He is. He great is. actor. Great talent. That's unfortunate. What's going it's on? It's very yeah. unfortunate. But it's like a lot of people that I want to work with. Regina King. I love Regina King. Oh, Regina King. Yeah. You know, y'all could. I can see y'all collaborating on something. I can see that. We both lost our sons. Like, yeah. I, I can, like, relate to her, and I love her acting, and I've been watching her since 227. Two, 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 right, yeah, for like, sure. so. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, that'd be dope, actually. I think y'all could really do something. Yeah. Yeah. But that's where, that's where you're at with no, uh, no Tyler Perry? Not really. Why would you do that? No Tyler Perry? I respect Tyler Perry's hustle. <laughs> I, I talk about why would you do that? <laughs> I respect his hustle, mm. but... No time. Uh, he doesn't okay. really have anything for people creatives like me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. probably not. Okay. You know? okay. Well, that's nothing that's against him. That's not to say that I won't work with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, you know who I can see though, and this is it's probably crazy. You might have never even thought about it, but uh, what's God? What's dog name? No, I can't. I'm tripping now. I can't even think of dog name from uh, the one who made the show Atlanta. Oh, I love um, Childish Gambino. Yes. What's his real name? Yes, Donald Glover. Yes. I was going to say Childish Gambino, <laughs> but I was like, let me get his real Donald name. Donald Glover, yeah, yeah. I can see that because, like, he weird. Like, and I think he, he do different shit. Now, I, I think that's why I think y'all could really put something together. Because like, Atlanta's some quirky I, I'm shit. Late. Yeah. That shit was great. Like, it was it hilarious. Was, man. And then I started watching his new. TV series Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Duh, I fucking love it. That's my shit. I never seen the movie. So <laughs> yeah. I, but that, okay. yeah, I, the show was great. It's based off the same concept. And honestly, it's, it's wild because I actually watching it, I never thought that him and old girl would have that kind of chemistry. But they it worked do. out. Yeah, it they did. worked out. I didn't get, I think I was on like the second episode. So I'm just oh, okay. really, but I love the, the premise of it. For sure. And, and he, he's, and he's he funny. Like, he is. He funny. And he has just, like a dry type of sense of humor. Yes. That, that, yeah. I love it though. I love it though. And, and just like the stuff that he creates. I'm just, I feel like y'all can vibe on that tip though. So yeah. I That's like the one him. I'm shooting for. So I like him and I also like, I can't, cannot think of his name. The mm. black guy. He was in a Bill Street Can Talk. He was in um, the movie with Brad Pitt when he was on the train. What? The train one? Yeah, the bullet train. Bullet train. He was the the black guy. Oh, so the I dude forgot. from Atlanta. Yeah, from Atlanta. Yeah, he did. Bro, what? I when I tell you, love him. when I saw a dog on what? Kong? I think he on Kong, he too. He is hilarious. Bro, he good, though. He is. He's like, a great actor. He is a great actor. hilarious. Well, you need to work with everybody on the I cast know, from Atlanta, I, love, I guess. I don't know if it's... I call her Zazie Beats because I, I... Bro. I wait a minute, her. wait a minute. He's a I, love I love her too, but probably for not the reason. Not I, love her. 
Zazzy, if you listen, I love her naturalness. You. you so sweet. I love yes. her naturalness. Yes, me I too. I just love her. Like, she's a great actress to me. No, so just looking at that, though, just the three people that you mentioned, like, that just goes to show you how well they cast in Atlanta. Like, yeah, because they all come from no, Atlanta. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And of course, Lakeith Stanford. I love yeah. him. He's so, now he, now he exotic. He I don't is know. He's exotic. He weird. But I love him too. <laughs> yeah, he dope too, though. He yeah. dope too. Yeah, the whole cast is. But my man's, I, and I can't think of his name, dog. I, I, I don't know. I don't know his name. But Stan, Stan, some Stanfield. Stan. No, yeah, I don't know. Lakeith Stanfield. That's his last name. Yeah. Uh, what's the whole name? But we love you though. We do. We, I'm gonna tag you in this. Though. I know, right? Because <laughs> she great. need to, she need to work with all of y'all. Oh, <laughs> for no, real. right? Now that'd be dope though. So on that note, it sound like the house is burning. No, out, no. So <laughs> just uh, f- forgive the uh, smoke detecting <laughs> background. If this episode never makes it, then you know why? Because no, we wow. died in the house fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note though, uh, we get ready to get out of here. But I do want to to uh, let people know where they can follow you. Um, and also before no go ahead tell the people where they can follow you do that first okay so you can follow me on Instagram it's Sean Van underscore production so it's S-E-A-N V-A-N underscore productions with an S Sean Van underscore entertainment they're both on Instagram and then I'm on Facebook under Erica S. Smith or it might be Erica Smith I can't remember because I'm transitioning my name is Erica Gomez but I'm also Erica Smith that's my main name so yeah. All right, for sure. Now the next thing I want you to do at this point is uh, I want you to leave uh, some aspiring, and don't have to be uh, female uh, producers or writers, but just anybody aspiring to get into the industry, like just leave them some, some words of encouragement. Like what would you tell the person who's trying to do what you're doing? Um, I would tell them to be true, and I know this probably sounds cliche, but be true to yourself. Mm. If what you want to write is what you want to write, people may not say, they may say like, hey, that's not popular or nobody wants to see that. Write what you want to write. Also, um, like I said, I was looking for opportunities from other people, but I, like I said, I had to give myself the opportunity. So give yourself the opportunity, open the door for yourself, believe in yourself. Don't let people distract you. Don't let them discourage you because they will, they'll get you off of your a game and you'll be stuck while they're still moving forward you over here feeling sorry for yourself so for sure work hard don't stop learning and quest mccoy i'm just about to plug him he's a <laughs> he's a popular battle rapper for sure. Shout out to quest. well known he is a really nice guy and he told me a wise man told him when he was young that you keep everything you have by giving it away mm. so whatever you learn whatever you do don't hold on to it. Give it away. Help somebody else. That's what I plan on doing. That's what I'm doing. Sure. Like, I'm going to give it away to people. You need to know how to write a screenplay. I'm going to give it away to you. I'm not about to charge you mm-hmm. to tell you something that I learned for free. Right. So, for sure. Yeah. That's what's up, Dad. All right. So, thanks for uh, coming through again for the second time. You was acting a little nervous, but no, good. No. <laughs> we got it all out the way, man. I think I think that there's some people who's going to hear this and, and be encouraged. Um, some people because I, this is an industry where you can be discouraged and I, and I get it and especially being a woman I know it can be a little discouraging because it's, it's sort of male dominated once you get to you know exactly the producers and, and mm-hmm. filmmakers like that um, I think it is male dominated so definitely I think that this uh, interview will be helpful for some people maybe even therapeutic for yourself you never yes. know <laughs> and I just want to say 48224 that's where I come from <laughs> 48224 It's alright we, we cool we the, we the 205 right now But it's all good Alright so Erica Thank you for stopping through um, Again We can't wait to see Whatever else you got Going in store And what's the name Of the new joint that's, That you're working on Right now Okay so I'm just gonna Plug this real quick mm-hmm. Contract Hiller Survival As a Ghost Rider Is on Tubi right now And then A Record in Time Is my new series And that should be streaming Hopefully by late fall For sure yeah. Alright Sounds good. Well, you already know what it is, man. It's your boy Q Lewis holding it down live from the 4205, man. Live on the block in the basement again with Miss Erica Gomez.